Hi, this is Russell Stunner from teachertraininvideos.com. Today's video is about breakout rooms. It's about all I've learned uh, from using them for many, many months now, and also from 10 years of working with similar types of tools, previously Adobe Connect. And what I'm gonna do is focus on what can you do to make the breakout rooms work as well as possible with your students so you get the maximum amount of student focus. So that's the first thing I'm gonna look at, absolutely key. Then I'm gonna focus on what do you need to teach the students so that they can work effectively in breakout rooms. And thirdly, I'm gonna give you some tips on settings that you might have not have been aware of. I really hope this is useful. I'm gonna give you some really useful tips of some really interesting things that have happened to me doing a whole series of experiments with breakout rooms and kind of observing what I was doing and what worked and then asking for feedback from students. So I really hope you're gonna find this useful. As always, if you do, please like the video, please share it, please comment on it. And of course, if you can, come and join me on teachertrainingvideos.com and uh, let's get started. Now the first point I'm going to make, I think is going to be quite surprising. If when you ask the students to move into the breakout rooms, and there's two parts of this. First you give them a specific task to do. So you ask them to write something in the interactive whiteboard, maybe to complete their ideas about something. You might give them perhaps a form to complete together. Perhaps they're going to comment on a PowerPoint slide or something like that. If you're giving them a specific task to do, it generally works better than if they're just kind of having a chit chat with their webcams on. So in fact, what I found, and this led to my second thing, that if I told them to turn off their webcams, to go into the breakout rooms and to open up the interactive whiteboard software or to open up a Google Doc and do an activity, then it generally works a lot better. If they were using their webcams, it ended up being a little bit of a chit chat with nothing specific going on. But there's something much more interesting. If you have got your webcam off and they have got their webcams off, when you go into the breakout room, they don't even know that you have actually come into the room. And so you can see if they're working well because you can see the task on the screen and you can see if it's being completed or not. If the task is going well and the students are doing well, well you might just listen for a couple of minutes, they don't know you're there, and then say, guys, right, well done. I Often my students would laugh because they'd suddenly realize that I was in the room. Now if you went into another room and you saw that no one was doing anything, nothing was being written on the interactive whiteboard or nothing was being written in a Google Doc, then obviously you can say, hi guys, you know, I'm here, can I help you? So it's a great tip tell them to turn off their webcams and you to turn off and you turn off your webcam as well and when you go into the breakout rooms you'll notice that you're actually inconspicuous no one will realize you're there that can be really helpful now there's another reason for that as well generally the breakout rooms will work better without the webcams on because webcams are internet heavy and if people haven't got very good connections it's already bad enough that they've moved into these breakout rooms, which are basically new Zoom rooms. But then on top of that, everyone's got their webcam on. That takes up a lot or passes a lot of data through the internet. So top tip, first of all, give the students a specific task to do. Secondly, turn off your webcams and get the students to turn off their webcams. Now I'm actually gonna demonstrate this to make this point really clear. So let me show you exactly what I mean. I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna turn on the start video and unfortunately I'm gonna be huge on the screen for a few seconds. Okay, so if I just click on here, then there you can see me. Now if I go into a breakout room, so let's go onto the interactive whiteboard software, there I am in the corner. And if there was more students in the room, they would all be there as well. Now let's just compare that with now me going into the breakout room, but this time I'm not on the camera. So if I go into a breakout room now, I haven't got my camera on, and if I jump onto the interactive whiteboard, there's absolutely no way of knowing how many other people are in the room or whether even who's in the room, including myself, because there simply is no camera with me, any reference to me at all. So from that point of view, if I was to come in now to this room, uh, and let's imagine this was a breakout room, then the students wouldn't even be aware that I've come into the room. And so that is a great way the students can be working on the screen, you can be listening to them for a couple of minutes and then you can say, right, guys, you're doing really well. I can see you've written lots of different points here, that's fine. 
So it's really, really helpful because you can see whether the students are getting on with the task or not. And uh, if they are, you don't really need to say too much. And obviously if they're not, then you can help them. Now I wanna talk about some of the tips, the other tips that I give to the students uh, to help them when they're working in breakout rooms. So one obvious one, is that I teach them to use the interactive whiteboard. And I'm gonna start there again because I just wanna show you some other things that I teach them about the interactive whiteboard. And then I'm gonna show you some other things that I also teach them. And the reason I do this is, is that it maximizes the way the students can work when they're working in breakout rooms. And let me just go through a couple of key points now I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I always show my students because it really helps them. If we click on screen share here, this is a really important technique. Let's imagine that we're going to get the students to watch a video. Remember, whenever they watch a video, make sure that they click here, share computer sound. So they're sh imagine that the students are working in groups and they're, they're sharing this and they're playing the video. So let's, okay, so we're in the advert at the moment, but they'll be, let's say, imagine they're playing the video and then they want to take some notes on what they've watched. What they can do is they can move up to the top here and they can click on new share and they can jump straight over to the interactive whiteboard. I always teach the students to start on the left hand side and to kind of teach them that, you know, if they need to open up the um, interactive whiteboard tools, they just come to the top and click here. That opens up the tools. I get them to start writing on the left hand side so that when they write, all of their ideas are organized now what I've noticed with a lot of students is that they suddenly think they need to stop share and then reshare to watch the video, but they don't. All they need to do is roll up to the top, best to close this down, roll up to the top, click on new share. They can jump straight back to the video. They can play the video for a few more seconds. And then once they, again, once they've watched the video and they want to come back to, do, to carry on their discussion, they just simply move up to the top, click on new share and jump straight back to the interactive whiteboard. And there it is. So that's really, really important. And it just makes a huge difference to the way that the students work when they're in, in groups and it just keeps them more organized. Now, one thing that a lot of teachers don't realize is that when students move into breakout rooms, they're actually in completely separate Zoom windows. And if they write something on the interactive whiteboard and then come back to the main room, and then they want to open that up and share it with the whole class, in fact, that interactive whiteboard won't be there because it's a completely different room with a different set of interactive whiteboards. But there is a trick we can teach our students to save the interactive whiteboard that they've written on and then they can open that back up when they're in the main room and I'm just going to show you that now. So let's imagine that the students are in a breakout room and one of them shares their interactive whiteboard software and they start taking some notes. So they click on the screen and they start discussing things and the, one, the, the, the student who's the leader is taking the notes. Now, when they come back into the main room, that's not going to be available to them. But what they can do is click over here, click on save, and you'll notice now that that whiteboard has been saved. That's really useful because it means that they can actually open that up at any time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear that just to show you what I mean. OK, so I'm just going to clear that drawing off the screen completely. So let's imagine now, let's just stop sharing, that they've come back now into the main room and they want to show what they've been discussing. They can open up the interactive whiteboard software, they can click on the save and show in folder and they'll see that they've actually saved the interactive whiteboard software and if they double click on it, it will actually open up and then they can discuss that with the rest of the group. So they are able to do that and that can be really, really useful if you want them to kind of feedback on the discussions. And that's what was really helping me to make my breakout rooms as a kind of student centered as possible because A, they were working in groups, discussing things and adding up their ideas on an interactive whiteboard software. And then B, they would come back to the main room and then the leader could open up that interactive whiteboard software and then discuss the points that that particular group had discussed. And so I did a fair bit of training with my students, teaching them, for example, how to, as I just showed you, open up the tools, how to actually clear the screen, how to add extra pages if they want to move on to page two or page three, they can also do that. How, for example, if they want to um, open up the chat window that they can click here and they can come up to the top, click on more and open up the chat as well. So all of these things that can help them 
when they're working in breakout rooms and it just makes such a difference to the way they work and I noticed as I was doing more and more training with my students that they were getting more confident and working more effectively and that benefited me when they come back to the main room to report back on what they'd done. Okay so we've we've obviously gone through how students will work together and a few tips there I've given you there a few tech tips to show your students I just want to talk a few and now about a few settings that you might not know about um, they're not particularly advanced settings but they're just settings where a lot of teachers keep emailing me and asking me Russ, I can't do this I can't do that so I'm just going to point out a few useful settings to you now if you come down to the bottom and you click on breakout rooms and you click on options just want to talk about a few things here move all participants into breakout rooms automatically good idea to select that that means that the students don't have to click on anything to actually come into the breakout room they'll just be moved in automatically allow participants to return to return to the main session I actually turn that off I like to bring the, the students back when it was time um, and I also reduce the amount of time now this is really handy you can reduce how quickly they come back to the main room when you close the wind when you close the rooms so you can kind of play around with that and I always set it to about 30 seconds sometimes even 15 now often what I do is when I do that is that I actually send them a little text just to let them know that uh, they're gonna come I'm gonna bring them back you do actually have that option to send an announcement out to all the breakout rooms now another little tip is that I always recreate the rooms when I'm working with uh, the students a second or third time uh, sometimes obviously you want them to go back into the same breakout rooms but quite often you want them to you want to recreate the room so that they're working with different people and that button is there now I don't think you actually need this final tip but just in case you do when students are working in breakout rooms of course you want them to screen share so sometimes and I always do it I'm not actually sure if even if I need to do this but I always go to advanced settings and always set that to all participants can share the window um, just or, or just so can share the screen just in case that is I think automatically when they move into breakout rooms that's kind of reset for you anyway so um, but just in case it isn't it's probably a good idea to set it um, it just simply means that when the students are in breakout rooms they can obviously share their screens now I'm just going to give you one final tip in the settings before you even start your zoom sessions some people complain to me that they haven't even got breakout rooms button and the reason for that is if when you log on to your account on zoom click on settings and then you need to scroll down quite a long way because actually where you want to come down to is the advanced settings so it's quite a long way down and you'll see there it is so in meeting advanced and you need that obviously activated allow host to split meeting participants into separate smaller rooms and so that is a very important button to be able to click on okay really hope that was useful please come to teachertrainingvideos.com lot more free lots more free videos there's a special section on zoom really popular and also on online teaching if you want to keep up with my work please sign up to the newsletter that way you keep up to date with all the blogs the webinars the online courses and of course the videos I create you can also sign up or subscribe to my YouTube channel don't forget to click on the bell so you get updated when all the new videos are uploaded and finally if you're looking for me to do a talk or to do some training with your institution I even do one-on-one -on -one training with some teachers who want to learn about things like Zoom and Moodle and uh, Camtasia etc. Then please if you are looking for training then contact me and you can do that from the website and thank you very much.